Hello, I'm King Link, and today we're going to do a review wrap-up for February 2020. If you've been a fan of my channel for long, or at least read my username, you know I started this channel by reviewing games. Recently, I've begun to cover game mechanics more with a focus on game design and talking about what really makes games stand out in their genre or from other games. At the same time, I still enjoy playing games and reviewing them. Along with my game mechanic videos, I think I'm going to take some time to make review wrap-up videos as I go along. Really talking about what I've played in the last month or maybe even two months, as well as recommend some games and telling you which games I would avoid in hindsight. We have 11 games this time, and the idea should be to go through this relatively fast. This is more like the humble choice video than a standard review, and it means I can tackle new or older games as I feel. It also means that I don't have to fully complete a game to really talk about it here as well. With that said, let's get started with a visual novel, Subsurface Circular. I'm actually putting this game first because I had a full review of this game ready to go and I ended up having to pull it at the last moment. Subsurface Circular is extremely well written and interesting. It's made by Bithell Games, whose owner, Mike Bithell, previously worked on Thomas Was Alone. Thomas Was Alone is important because it had an excellent story, and with a visual novel, the story is going to be what matters here. There are some great narrative choices in this game, and the fact is the player is limited to a single subway car, while being a detective is definitely an odd move, but I think much of this game works because of that strange limitation. There are small but solid puzzles, interesting characters, and the entire game kept my attention. Though at the same time, the whole game is a mostly linear experience with a small choice at the end. You know, I understand spoilers and I kind of hate giving that away, but it's important to understand what you should expect from this visual novel. It's very story driven. I do recommend this one and I know the sequel is supposed to have a little more freedom with the story. It's something I want to check out in the next year. A side note and a bit of disclosure, I actually do know someone who worked in this game, Tim Borelli. I worked with him for about four years at Volition, and I'll also say that he's a fantastic animator, so definitely keep an eye out for whatever he ends up working on next. Next up we have a game I played on Epic Game Store, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. This is the sequel to the Kickstarter game from 2017, and once again it's from Playtronics, but it's also a very different game, though I kept calling it yuka -tui. Where the first game in this series was clearly based on Banjo-Kazooie, this one is actually based on Donkey Kong Country, and yes, I do know both of them were made by Rare. But it's a strange choice to go to a completely different genre in the second game. I'm going to be honest though, I think it worked out for Playtronics this time. It's a far better game and they have an interesting system where each level in the game has a different version. Unlike most games that would have used the same type of conversion for multiple levels, this time there are 20 levels in the game and there's 20 unique conversions for those levels. So one level might freeze, another one might flood, just think of it as almost 40 levels in the game. The overworld map though is fantastic and easily the best part of Yuka Tui. I could have spent about 6 hours just on the map alone and called it an amazing game. It was so much fun. The levels here are particularly good and there are some great challenges. The final level though is brutally hard, the impossible layer of course, and honestly I have a lot of opinions on that design, however these shorter reviews don't really allow that, but they should have divided that level into fourths with full level for completionists. I mean, come on. Overall though, I do recommend Yuka Tui, or of course, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair strongly. Even if you didn't like the first game, give this one a shot, I think you'll enjoy it. Next up, Graveyard Keeper. And I recently covered this game while talking about Stardew Valley and My Time at Porsche. It's a very solid game and it has a great twist on that farm simulator, life simulator genre with darker humor here. Graveyard Keeper is a bit grindy, but that is what the simulator genre is about, I think. And I found that Graveyard Keeper kept moving at a brisk pace, introducing new pieces of the game. So you might have to do some repetitive tasks, but you'll always have a lot of goals in the game to chase at your own pace. There's also a lot more story than I expected, and I was really impressed with that. I think it's probably my third favorite out of these games, both Stardew and Portia beat this one by a decent amount, but I also think it's worth playing. Outer Wilds, another epic game store title. Honestly, I don't want to say too much here. This game is guaranteed to be talked about in the next month in one of my game design videos. It's an incredible game with a great focus on exploration, and it does exploration right. 
There are some very minor issues with Outer Wilds, but it's a game that you're going to want to go in fresh. So I would recommend playing it without seeing any spoilers if possible, or trying to avoid hearing about the main mechanic of the game. I'm going to leave that off here. At the same time though, the game is extremely solid, I think it's deserving of a ton of praise, though I will give one caution, it is a pure exploration game, there's no combat, so if you need to have combat, this one might not be for you. Otherwise, absolutely check this one out, and I'll be back shortly to talk about it further. A small indie title that I played this month was Snake Bus. I heard about it from writing on games, and I had to give it a shot. It's a fun and unique game. It takes the old concept of Snake that anyone has played at some point, probably on a phone, and revitalized it by adding a third dimension and the concept of public transportation. Really, you've seen most of the game already by watching me play. You get passengers, you drop them off. There's a lot of different level designs and unique bus designs, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's called Snake Bus. I don't think there needs to be much more to the concept, and you can pick it up for a couple bucks and enjoy it for a few hours. Next up, Punch Club. I randomly chose this game without realizing that it's also made by the guys who made Graveyard Keeper. I will be honest though, I really don't like this one. It seems like there's a lot you can do in Punch Club and there's a very large story here, however the game does suffer from a very strict training regimen. Now recently I got back into working out. Sadly, flexing doesn't work so well on these videos. But the thing is, if you gain muscle and don't work out for, let's say, a day, even a week, sometimes even a month if you get really sick, you're not going to lose an absolute ton of muscle mass. There will be some losses, but in Punch Club you lose maybe half of your gains every day. You have to constantly chase certain goals to stay strong in some way. The other side and the more important part of the game is that the fighting is not that interesting. You have very little agency over the actual punching part of Punch Club, and instead you sit around, assign abilities, and hope it works out. Overall though, I found this to be extremely dull. Then there's Ace Combat 7. I forget which Ace Combat was my first, but this is a series that I've been a big fan of for a long time. The odd thing about the series is it's always had like an anime story along with a pseudo-realistic plane combat. However, the story in Ace Combat 7 really doesn't focus on our main character that much, and instead seems to unrelated to the actions that the player takes for much of the game. Eventually, the main character does work into the story, but it's pretty poorly done. There's also a huge problem with the story being a hero story, where the main character is the only one who can do anything of value while flying. Everyone else is rubbish. The combat though was really solid and fun, there's some good missions, great battles, it's better than Ace Combat Assault Horizon, but it's Ace Combat which means it has a lack of realistic controls even if you set it to that, and a focus on lining up a shot rather than worrying about flying the plane directly. It is still fun if you want to try out the series though and I recommend it. Metal Slug I played the first game of the Metal Slug series and had a pretty good time. It's still a fun and inventive game with a lot to offer. However, this is the second Metal Slug game I've played on Steam and has the same issues that the first game I played had. While Metal Slug is a very well done game, the game was really designed to swallow quarters in an arcade. Now with unlimited quarters in the remake or port to PC, it loses a lot of what made it special. There are still great moments, but unless you have someone to play with or really want to master the game and avoid using uh, continues, you'll beat these games in a couple of hours and move on. This one's skippable, but it's also kind of fun to play. Void Bastards. I just did a video on this one, and I'm thrilled to play this game. There's a lot of solid game design that benefit the player here, and now the addition of the challenges means there's a perfect reason to come back and try it again. It isn't really System Shock, I know people have been calling it that, but it's the same thing that Prey kept getting called System Shock 3. Personally, I think that's a horrible thing to do because it makes people expect something and get something completely different. With that said though, I absolutely enjoyed Void Bastards, I think it's a great entry level roguelite and quite welcoming. Definitely worth checking out to people who are new to roguelites or just enjoy that genre. I will be linking the video I did on this at the end of the video, so check that out. It is a solid game though. Shovel Knight. So I recently decided to play through Shovel Knight again as I wanted to check out all the DLC that has finally come out and now it's a complete game, I think. 
Honestly, there's a ton of value here for 40 bucks, with the feeling of almost four games for the price of one because each character plays so differently and they're all unique. The Smash Brothers mode alone is also a nice touch for fans of this game. At the same time, I'm probably going to cover this in the next month. The quick version for the video is that it feels like an updated Mega Man game, and that's a great thing. You fight different bosses, collect different powers, and so much of the game feels very well designed. Overall though, I like it, I'll play more, and while I finally ran out of steam on the King of Cards expansion, the fourth of the list, I had played 35 hours through all four different campaigns. Like I said, this is a great value proposition, and I keep picking up this game for a little more when I need a fast run of something. Finally, we come to a game that really disappointed me. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Now this is one of the reasons I like this new format because I haven't played this whole game. But LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 got me to stop playing after only a couple hours. It's not a very exciting game and I'm a huge Marvel fan, but this just isn't enough. A big problem for this game is the absence of Fox properties. No Wolverine, no Deadpool, yet Gwenpool for some reason. No X-Men at all, no Fantastic Four. I mean, come on. Some of the character choices are a little bit odd as well. And this is the same problem that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite had, though hardly the only one of either of these games. After a couple of hours, I just wasn't loving the story and I stopped after the second mission. Players really have to buy into the property at the core of any LEGO game, and in this case, I just couldn't. Personally, I liked LEGO Jurassic World a lot more. I've enjoyed quite a few of the LEGO games, but this one just didn't do it for me. I'd say save a few bucks if you're interested in this. Grab the first LEGO Marvel superhero game instead, especially if you just want to play with LEGO uh, figurines. That one has them all. So that's my opinion on a bunch of games for this month. We'll just finish it up with the best and worst of this month. We'll start with the worst. Now this month had a few bad games, but the one I think that I liked the least was Punch Club. It really needed a lot more interaction in the gameplay, it had the story and style that should work, but it felt extremely grindy and that happens entirely too early in the game. On the other hand, best of the month, well I actually wanted to give this to Void Bastards or Ace Combat 7, but in the end, Outer Wilds was just fantastic here and it's worthy of a ton of praise. I know it won some awards last year and I understand why. It's a prime candidate for the best of the year. So this is my new format. Now I did say this was February 2020's wrap up. This isn't necessarily a monthly thing. I think I'm going to try to keep it more towards 10 games at a time. But just so we know what part of the year this came out, February. With that said, what do you think of the new format? Um... Is there any games that you think I should check out in the next month? Feel free to leave me a comment down below with either of those. And we're going to have the humble choice for March 2020 coming up right after this, I believe. And then we'll be talking about more game design. I have two videos already kind of planned. One of them was voted on in a poll. Another one is just, well, Outer Wilds, of course. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And ring that bell so you get updates for future videos. I'm going to link my new video of how Stardew Valley works and how Void Bastards works so you can check out that new format. I think it's doing well for itself. Until then, I'm King Link, and thanks for watching.